right, I'm gonna start this thing. Hello. Am I still on? <laughs> yes, baby. All right, I'm doing something new today, and that is playing with tofu. And I'm really just, I'm gonna fuck around with this, but I've never done this before. So of course I'm gonna record it because, is it recording? <laughs> of course I'm gonna record it. Is it recording? <laughs> I swear to God every time. Because it's just down, bound to be funny because I don't know how to do things with grace. So I figured I would do this on camera with you guys while also sharing the story of my like religion slash spirituality journey because that was something that was mentioned that would be interesting to talk about. So I'm gonna talk about it. I have onions, cauliflower. Did we not get broccoli? Okay, so I don't have broccoli. It was kind of like what I was building this meal around. How did I not buy broccoli? What's in here? Broth! Shit. Okay, so I have cauliflower and onion. And tofu. What did you want to do with it? I was gonna make like like pad thai or something. But like I was really trying to eat broccoli. Like, all right, we're still gonna fuck around with the tofu. I am a little bit discouraged. I'm not nearly as inspired or motivated to do this because I don't know any type of like Thai without broccoli, but we're gonna do it. Um, so I like that it's in two little blocks because I'm only gonna use half and that means that I don't have to figure out how to store the other half without owning any Tupperware, so that's cool. We're basically gonna try and strain it and press all the liquid out. <laughs> best of our abilities. Ew, what's it in so much water? I don't know how it's firm. Also, shout out to my boy Jason who saw my skinny squash video and was like cringing the whole time at me using metal in my non-sticks because it's all I had at the time. And he looked it up with the bamboo utensils. We're leveling up in the kitchen. Dude, sick. It's the first time I've had to use those. I'm gonna and then the video I watched just now said to kind of do them in like long i felt like that was going to be a little bit more like tough to cut through it was like really soft so i'm basically gonna lay out paper towels and then press it and then use more paper towels on top to just continue pressing out the liquid for the time being and i will start with my story time so growing up i lived with my biological mom until i was 13 and then i moved in with my dad here Vegas. So like the first half of my childhood, there wasn't really a sense of like indoctrinated religion. Uh, my stepdad was Catholic, but he wasn't a practicing Catholic. And my mom only ever went to church if like something was going on. It just kind of seemed like something you do when you know, something bad is happening and you like need extra support or something. My dad, on the other hand, for as long as I can remember, we've had a family prayer that we all say before dinner time. Like, I remember having like a what would Jesus do bracelet when I was a kid. I remember over the phone my dad giving me like lessons about the Bible and really trying to like teach me, you know. He really sees that and still to this day is his um, duty as like the man of the house or the leader of the house or however it's written. And when I was 13 and moved in with them, it I became a part of their routines and rituals. Like we just kind of did our own family worship on Sunday where he would put on like the Bible, like that documentary that was on the History Channel or movies that talked about the biblical stories we would read together, I guess. And then like while we would clean the house, deep clean the house on Sundays, we'd listen to worship music. None of that really like brought me into the religion. I still had a lot of questions that I felt like people were unable to answer. I had always been very called my whole life to rock collecting and looking at the stars, nature gazing. Um, I'd always had very intuitive dreams. I was always very fascinated by fortune telling and palmistry. Those things were always really demonized. They were always like, he would bring out the scripture that would basically talk about how God was a jealous God. Um, I don't even remember them. I've done an active, like an active attempt at forgetting them actually of how you don't need to go to a fortune teller, you don't need to meditate, you don't need blah, blah, blah. Like, it's all bad, blasphemy, whatever. So I was always kind of like, this really ain't for me. 
Like I, I felt like it was very emotionally manipulative. Like I think I'm losing my mind. <laughs> my grandparents actually. I remember not my grandparents. My grandma and my abuelitos. I remember my dad um, and my uncles being very concerned for them for a while because they were really fascinated on christian science i don't know what else to call it i don't know if that's even the right words but that's what my dad called it when he would reference it i never really understood why they were so concerned for their souls because that's literally what they would say and lucky for me my grandpa knew me and his son and before he passed away he actually gave me all of my grandmas and my abuelitas uh spiritual books that they used during that time. And it's not something that I practice, but it is something that I feel like I can connect to them through. And it's it's really interesting. I'm glad that I have those. So they told me in the video that when it was done, it was gonna feel like wet cheese. <laughs> I just don't know that it feels like that. I did find God once. I was on a bus. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was a freshman in high school. Looking back on it, it was totally manipulative in nature because I had a friend that lived in the same complex that I lived in. We went to the same school together, and um, she went to the church like right up the street from where we lived. And we were at the pool in our complex, and she was talking about how she was going to Fireside that night. To me, in my head, I'm thinking Fireside is like a bonfire or something. Like it fun. wasn't. She invited me and I was like, well shit, it's at the church. That sounds like a fun ass time where I can meet some of your friends, make some new friends, hang out at a bonfire, whatever. And I'm sure my parents will let me go because it's church. And they did, so I went and it was geared toward the youth and sucked me right the fuck in. I found God. Like seriously, I, I was into it. I had my own little book that they gave me. So I, and through that, I found friends, I found an outlet i found a safe place that was outside of my house which was very controlling and manipulative and abusive in many different natures and so uh it was an outlet for me that i was really easily able to escape in which i feel like is kind of the whole premise of the thing you know pray on the week kind of a idea that honestly faded pretty quickly once i moved out of my dad's house and it makes sense because I'm not being damned for having interests that don't fall within the Bible or the Bible's translations. And I kind of had the freedom to sort of explore who I was as a person. So it kind of started to hit the point where I was using like the Christian symbols as sort of like talismans. Like I remember wearing the cross that my dad gave me, which is the cross that's in this tattoo. And this whole tattoo is symbolic of my family, represents my dad. Um, and I wouldn't wear it so much as a connection to like the father. It was almost like a connection to my father because we had such a strained relationship. Um, you probably will find pictures and stuff of me up until like my 20s of me wearing that cross. And that was well beyond my uh, Christian indoctrination days. Those were just kind of like how I was connecting to my family that I didn't have connections with. Um, I would say that like my real awakening where I truly stepped into my own beliefs and like ex exploration um, happened in 2014 when I stopped eating meat. Through that, I was led to meditation just intuitively and I found a world of like knowledge and through Pinterest and just literally Pinteresting meditation and kind of going from there. And then meditation led me to mindfulness and then mindfulness led me to like breathing exercises and then breathing exercises and meditation and mindfulness led to like awareness away from fear, which led me into my aligned spiritual in nature like punches. I don't really know how to like verbalize it. I don't know, I think I was just finally able to kind of explore the things that I was never freely allowed to explore in the past. And so I just sort of dove all in and I never came out like the rabbit hole. I'm still a crazy person living well within it. Yeah, so now we can talk about that part of my life. I'm literally going through all the things I was trying to talk to you about while um, barely getting the moisture out of this thing. I'm gonna cut these in half like this and then make some little nugs. I'm gonna put some cornstarch on the board because apparently this is what makes it like How much cornstarch is too much cornstarch? Um, I usually have two cameras going when I'm doing things in the kitchen so you guys get like above and 
not above angles, but not today. Sorry. Like, I feel like it smells more like tofu now than it did before I put it in cornstarch. So that makes me feel like this was definitely an appropriate step. Kind of absorbs it. Now I don't know which one's the starched one. If there's not some starched ones, we'll be able to do that. <laughs> See which one we like. Look, I don't have a towel right now. I'm a wasteful rich person. I never get to have paper towels, so when I do, I feel like a wasteful rich person. Tell me you grew up poor without telling me you grew up poor. Guilt for what you use as paper towels. Um, okay, I'm gonna use this cast iron for the tofu and then this one for the veggies. These are cute. I didn't realize it was that small when I bought it, but I'm not bad. Just plain old vegetable oil. It would, I would be much more excited about cooking this if I had like carrots or celery or broccoli. Ready. I'm not entirely sure how fast these guys are going to cook on both sides. Alright, I feel really bad that you can't see this. That's what she looks like. Ooh, it's crimpsy, but it's also making the other side. Ah! It's also making the other side gooey. Ew! It's tofu, babe! Oh, I missed a piece. Damn. I'm starting to get Kamal smells. If you know, you know. Alright, I'm gonna start cutting this. Did you just fart? Did you just fart? No. <laughs> get the fuck out of my kitchen. You want to build a snowman? So, down the pagan rabbit hole. A place in which I still live today. Okay, um, so I guess we should start with like, what's paganism to begin with? I don't know, let's ask Google. I mean, I do know, but I want to know what the, uh, I know what my definition is. I wonder if it's right. <laughs> a person holding religious beliefs other than those of the main world religions. Okay, cool. I have that understanding, but then also the understanding that you believed in multiple gods. But I guess that's not required because you can be spiritual without believing in any gods or deities. And I would still be considered pagan because it's not one of the three main religions. Is it three? We'll say Abrahamic. Abrahamic? How do you say that? I don't even know what kind of word, what word you're trying to say. Like, the, all the religions based around, like, Abraham. So that's, like, Islam, Judaism, fucking Christianity. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's a lot of, like, regular, well-known, worldly religions. I'm doing a terrible job at explaining this. That part's not my part, you know? I'm yawn. Ooh. Okay. Word. Look at it. Do you see it? What's that movie? Do you see it? Do you see them? <laughs> yes! So that's cool. I'm gonna flip these. Ooh, I'm killing the game, y'all. So I'm really feeling like cornstarch was the move. Glad I had some. Glad I didn't skip the step. This is the first time I've ever actually tried to cook tofu before, ever. And I, so far, oh, we're gonna hit ourselves. Very impressed. Oh yeah, fucking tofu who? I'll let those continue on the other side. It is going to happen faster, I imagine, because there's not as much oil in there now, so it's just on like the, I don't know science, it just feels like it's going to go faster. We can get into my beliefs and practices, which truthfully don't fit into a box. Um, I don't fall into the, like, I don't identify as a Wiccan. What do I identify with? Alright, now that I'm trying to put words to it, it's actually kind of hard. I don't know, you ever have such a profound thought that like you can't even really put it into tangible words or like, ex or feeling? Like you can't really use, like find words to express fully what you're feeling. I feel like I have a lot of those when it comes to how I believe. And I guess those are just sacred to me and my heart and my meditations. I guess I can start with the basic questions. Do I believe in God? No. Yes. No. 
Yes, not really. Kind of, but not how you would think. Um, not how most people do, anyway. Do I believe that there is a man up in the sky that has predestined my entire life but given me free will to basically potentially send me to hell if I don't do what he said? Like, do I believe in that? No, I don't. I do believe in source energy, though. And that's, I think, where it becomes difficult to, like, describe and explain. Source energy, life. Everything that's alive shares the same source energy. Like if you look into genetic makeup of the stars, there's multiple identical compounds also within human beings and plants and animals and earth. Honestly, I guess I would, if I had a God that I worshiped, it would be earth. Like that is our source energy. Everything is an ecosystem that works in alignment and in connection with each other and the other life sources on this planet. It's all a big circle. Without Earth, we die. I probably sound like a crazy person. I just used the TV to fucking get the cast iron off the stove. I'm gonna wash my cauliflower now. My spirituality is, it's very aligned with science. I believe in the laws of the universe, which is the law of divine connection or the law of divine oneness, the law of attraction. Is the law of divine oneness even what it's really called? Yeah, it's a law that states that we're all connected through creation. Every single atom inside of you is connected in some way, shape, or form to the rest of the universe you move through. This means that everything we do have is, has a ripple effect and impacts the collective, not just ourselves. So I'm also going to say that a lot of my teachings and what I've learned has come through... <laughs> such a pretty person. Has come through as downloads during meditation. So there's a lot of things that I come to understand and just know without any type of like formal teaching or rhyme or reason or logic behind it until I happen to be reading something or come across something that kind of like puts words to it for me to be able to Google and actually learn about it from an outside source. A lot of this information comes as like inside source downloads that I get through meditation, through stream of consciousness writing and other spiritual practices. So that's why I keep Googling, like to make sure that I'm not incorrect because uh, it could be. <laughs> Washing the cauliflower, wash your vegetables, don't be a scab. What was I just talking about? Um, I believe in the laws of the universe, okay. And honestly, I guess if I was gonna like nutshell up like the law, like the scripture that I follow, it's that. And then I use that in correlation with my spiritual practices and my connection with nature and to myself and the earth and the universe to manifest which is magic, which is considered pagan because you're not praying to a god to basically give you these things and trusting that it's going to be a part of your plan and if it's not, it's just not meant for you. It's basically taking control of your life and creating the life that you want using the laws of the universe that we live in in this vessel that our soul is just like using to like stomp around this earth. Like we're so not confined to this. And I connect to my spirit and the goddess within me through meditation. Um, I hope that I did a decent job explaining that. I guess if not, literally just comment questions and I'm excited and happy to make multiple videos about this um, because it's not conventional. It's becoming more conventional as people are starting to wake up from the Christianity indoctrination, um, but it's still kind of like a taboo thing. So if you have questions about it and you wanna know something that I didn't cover, um, just let me know. What's next? Let's talk about this tofu. Hold on, check this out. We got some sponge, but we got crisp. We're gonna see, we're gonna do the taste test here. Dude, I didn't even salt it. I didn't put any seasonings on it because I wanted to fuck around and find out. And this is gonna be good in my sauce. I'm not mad at that. And I think the thicker pieces, I was annoyed with myself that they're actually gonna be better. What, what do these practices look like? What do these rituals look like? What does, what do my holidays look like? I celebrate the wheel of the year. Um, I, I've never heard it out loud, so I say sabbats, but I feel like it might be sabbats. Let's ask the computer again. Sabo, French. Sabo? No. Am I even spelling this correct? Sabo. Sabo. 
Stop it. No way. Okay, hold on. We we'll, we'll make sure I'm spelling it right. Okay, I was spelling it incorrectly. Let's. I just didn't. I didn't feel right. Oh, here we go. Shabbat. Shabbat. Is there sh in that? Shabbat. Let's try another one. Shabbat. Shabbat. Okay, so there's definitely an sh in the beginning of it. Let's try it. the third one's the charm. Now we're got a fifty-fifty here. Where we at? Sabbat. That one said Sabbath. Okay, so it don't matter how you fucking pronounce it. I, I say Sabbath, so we're gonna go with Sabbath. Um, fucking language, man, it's such a trip. So basically, okay, the Wheel of the Year, it's considered, I think, the Witch's Almanac, which is marking and celebrating the beginning of each season, which is the equinox of each season, and the midpoint of each season. So you saw my Yule video, or I have a Yule video, how I celebrated Yule, which is the winter solstice. And then I just celebrated in bulk. Um, I didn't make a video about that, but that was on February 1st, the evening leading into the second. That was basically marking halfway through winter, which is also known as Groundhog's Day. And then the next one will be Ostara, or Ostara, or Os I say Ostara. And that is the spring equinox, which I want to say Easter is the abduction of that holiday, but again, I could be wrong. Never, never take anything that you hear on the internet as fact until you've like proven it to yourself. Okay. I don't know anything. This is just what I know. <laughs> so the wheel of the year, which tracks the cycles in the season, uh, the cycles of the seasons. And then I track the moon cycles. And that's a huge part of my life. I would probably say the biggest part of my spirituality and using the moon's energy to navigate my life. I've always been super, super, super called the moon. And then once I started learning about the, the cyclic energies that come with each moon phase and how, not only how they, align and can move with your your personal moon cycle as a menstruating human but also just human beings in general i mean think about the ocean like the earth is made up of 70 percent water and the ocean's tides are the highest on a full moon and the calmest on a new moon and your body is made up of upwards of 70 percent of water and it would be foolish to not assume that you don't have your own tides and, and waves that are pulled and, and magnified by moon and her energy i mean as above so below but as i see it it is inside me everything's a mirror um, from trees to like actual nature and earth and the planet to how people behave and how it affects me it's all a mirror into my soul and i just do my best to connect with it by releasing ego and keeping an open mind not really having beliefs that uh close close me off i think the only beliefs that close me off are those that are against like human beings or just being nice to yourself and other people you know i think i'm even out of my cheap garlic which is like the pre-minced also this is the sauce that we're working with i get it at smith's it's like just under three dollars maybe and it's actually quite a few of my jars I like, the, and it's good. It's good sauce. And it's plant-based, but it has peanuts in it, so we gotta worry about that. Thank for you. I'm actually going to start cutting the noodles so I can kind of do it all together because I'm gonna put some cornstarch in the sauce. So when I throw it into the pan, it's gonna become sticky, and I'm not gonna have a lot of time to like. It needs to be ready when I do that. Now that I think about it, I think I actually have an old YouTube video. I want to say that it explained how moon's energy and phases affect you and how you can use them to like manifest. I think I even have a ritual in there that you can kind of see and get a glimpse of what that looks like for me. It's not the same on every moon. It really depends on the season. It depends on what type of manifesting I'm trying to do or need to do at the moment. Um, and that kind of determines what elements I use and focus on and like mantras and things like that. So check that out. I leave all my old videos up and a lot of them are honestly cringy, but that's part of the journey, you know what I mean? So I'm enjoy <laughs> the cringe. Just cooking down the end in here till it gets a little see through. Cauliflower in there and get that a little. So I think that's, that's, that's pretty much it in terms of like conscious cycles and rituals that I do on a like routine basis. Other things that I do, which were, which I think would just kind of fall under like 
practice would be um, meditation. Yoga, I honestly used to call it yogitation because it's meditation with movement and that's honestly like can be an even more powerful tool depending on what you're meaning to do or use it for. I read tarot, I read palms, that's something I've known how to do my whole life was passed down to me. I stream of consciousness write, uh, which is kind of like prayer. Write what's on your mind and eventually it turns into soul writing and sometimes you can see and understand things clearer for your past, present, and future. I scribe, that's like another way to uh, manifest through writing, which is basically when you write out what it is that you are manifesting as if it were happening in the present tense, while really going deep into what kind of emotions you would feel when you receive them. Um, I make altars, which in all of my altars include all the elements, earth, water, fire, air, and spirit, some form of spirit, which usually comes for me through smoke. I was taught as a young little girl that your spirits and guides and ancestors can only see while they're visiting on this plane through candlelight. So I always have a candle burning. And so you got Usually I get udon noodles because I'm making pad thai, but they didn't have them, so I just got lovely noodles. They come in a cute little sleeve here like that. But it's gonna be okay. Just that one's a little crazy. I'm going garlic powder, onion powder. I'm gonna go a little turmeric. I know that we're going Thai. probably like 15 to 20 minutes left of cooking and I've kind of gone over like what my world of religion looks like so let me try this I feel cooked no so what I'm doing is I'm pouring oh my god I'm pouring this into a bowl and then I'm gonna add some cornstarch to it which is going to help make it um it's probably like a teaspoon or a tablespoon it's probably a tablespoon Ugh. oh my god it's burning my eyes yeah i can feel it okay i'm gonna move you a little bit closer so you can kind of see what i'm doing now cool thank you okay so now i'm going to combine Tofu, the noodles. No, I didn't want you to stick together that fast. I tried the oil enough, but I don't think I did, but that's okay. Again, remember, we are winging this hot. I'm trying to mix it a little bit before I throw in the sauce because I don't know. Since 1995, this, this made a lot. Yo, that looks freaking good. It would look better with broccoli, but it still looks good. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, bitch. Who's in the house? We got Thai food in the house. Nug. Shut up. Oh. Oh my god, killed it, murdered it, suffocated until the life left its body. 
All right, that's done. These, usually you like put them in water. I don't know, like 10 second nuke it. Oh God. I nuked it. I, uh, it's not usable anymore. It exploded. What exploded? Is it just all over the microwave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucky for us, I think we actually have our own sweet and sour. <laughs> Fuck the bullshit, babe. Can you tell? Probably not, but whatever. You see me? Okay, so now we're gonna plate. I have these fantastic gourmet paper plates right now. Judge me later. Make sure that there's a good amount of collie and tofu on there. Fried rice from a bag. Can't fuck it up. Please break it up with me and you. All right. We got some pad thai, tofu, cauliflower, onion, noodle. Delicious. We got some PF Chang's rice from a bag. We got some spring rolls from a bag. And then, of course, to compliment, Kraft and Kroger, sweet and sour and sriracha, what's up? Big ballin'. It is 11.37 p.m. We're about to walk that dog and that dog and then come home and there that up. I don't know. Ooh, it smells good. Okay, so did it come out crispy or did it come out like? It came out, it came out, try it. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was going to be weirded out by the texture of the tofu because I'm not a big tofu fan because of the texture of it, but it's really good. Like, it's not like, I feel like it's not just like mush. It's not spongy. No. No, it's really good. Good job. Thanks. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> All right, bye. Try to catch me howling at the moon.